let's go into the word of God and uh, let's go into the word of God and we're going to just begin to finalize our teaching on the believer's authority you know at this time we'll finalize it then we'll pick it up again we'll finalize and pick it up again hallelujah I want us to read from Genesis chapter 1 in verse 26 and just to as a way of backtracking we began to establish that number one when God has all, all power and all authority comes from God God doesn't have authority God himself doesn't have authority you know that you know the right right don't you know why God doesn't have authority because authority is delegated what is delegated what power who will delegate to God who will delegate to God so God God is the supreme source of power we have authority because it delegates to us so the Bible says and um, so so we understand that so the second thing is this so all of all authority comes from God all power comes from God and one of the things I wanted you to see is that man was given this power initially but because of man's um, because of man's decision man decided to release his power and authority to Satan so the Bible says Satan became the God of this world and let me answer quickly here someone says why do bad things happen in this world why do bad good people die why are there earthquakes? Why are these things? Why is God doing this? Why is God bringing tsunami? Why is there COVID-19? And the truth is that that is not God. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says, there is a God of this world. The God of this world, another word is the ruler of this world. Is the ruler of this world. So the Bible calls him Satan. So the reason why bad things happen is because there is what? See what the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Because this is a very big question. Why did my parents die when I was young? Why did my brother die early? Why did God take him? And all of those. And people say God did a lot of things. But, and the reason why people say so is that they assume that everything that happens on earth is done by God. But see what the Bible says here. The Bible says, in whom what? The God of this world. See, the word God means the paramount ruler. is the ruler of this world. So whatever happens in this world, some of the breakup you have is the work of the God of this world. Some of the people that duped you is the work of the God of this world. They don't even know why they duped you. It was the work of the God of this world. It was the work of, uh, you know, the Bible calls it in Ephesians about 6, rulers of darkness, which the Greek word is cosmopoteron, is the work of the rulers of darkness. They are under the influence of the rulers of darkness. Sometimes, sometimes you hear the case of someone that stabbed someone else and the person begins to say, I don't even know what got over me. And that is the influence of Satan at that moment. So I wanted to just really say, because sometimes it's, you, can, you can just say that maybe God allowed this, God allowed that. So the Bible makes us know there's a God of this world. So that's why bad things really happen. There's a God of this world. There's a God of this world. There's a curse that the world is already working on that. There's a curse. The world is working on that. So let's go ahead and just go into this. So we began to say man had authority. Let's look at that in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Man had dominion from the beginning. When he fell, he passed it over to Satan. And in Christ... In Christ, we defeated Satan and took back our authority. We took back our authority. So why are we teaching this? We're teaching this because we want everyone to know that we've taken back our authority. So Genesis 1 verse 26. Let, let's see what Adam's dominion looked like. Genesis 1 verse 26. The Bible says this, And God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. God made man in two ways. It was in his image and after what? his likeness what does that mean god made man to look like him so if we first of all jesus is the image of the, of the godhead so who does god who does man look like if you ever see god trust me he doesn't have three eyes and seven horns and seven heads the reason why is that man was made in someone's image there was a template already so man was made in his image and his likeness in his image and likeness means it was made to look like him and it was made to function like him that's what i'm going to he was designed to what function like him why was it designed to function like him god's plan was this that as he was a ruler that man would also be a ruler that's what god's plan was 
you were you were designed for rulership you were designed for leadership you were designed for influence that's your build that's why when things are not going well you cringe the reason why you cringe is because it's not your nature not not to lead it's not your nature to struggle your nature is to survive your nature is to spread your nature is to do well it's to thrive that's your nature so the bible says this Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 he says and and the bible says this and god said god made man in our image he said let's make man in our image and after our likeness why are we doing this let them have dominion another word is authority let them have authority over the fish of the sea you you were built to have authority so when you go through this life and you begin to say life is happening to me you are on the wrong side you are the one that should be making life to happen because you were built to have authority he said let's make man to have dominion you are not the one that should be dominated you are the one that should have what dominion glory to god say i'm the one that should have dominion as a matter of fact, i say i have dominion that's it you have dominion the Bible says this, this is very powerful. He says, it says, let, it says, verse 26 now, and let them have dominion. What is dominion? Some say over spiritual things, no. He says, over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle. You know what I'm saying this to you? I need you to have the dominion mentality when you enter an industry you are not there to hustle you are there to dominate when you enter a city you are not just to just be there you are there to dominate you need to have the dominion mentality someone say i have dominion let me say something to you the worst thing that can happen to you is because you have personal challenges to begin to change the way you think about god's word because it will ruin everything You have dominion praise God you have dominion you literally have dominion literally you have dominion someone say have dominion powerful so when you so, so listen to me you know oh wow my dad my natural dad had high blood pressure and use high blood pressure drugs my mom had high blood pressure and used high blood pressure drugs. So as I was growing up, it was in my mind that you're going to have high blood pressure and use high blood pressure drugs. I said, I will not because I have dominion. No, I'm not going to let my blood pressure come to that place where I use high blood pressure drugs. I was saying in the first service, one time I woke up in the morning and I was trying to read something just by my bed and I noticed, you know, when you can't see like that, when you start losing your sight, you know what I'm talking about? I'm like, ah, uh, ah, uh, I sat up. I couldn't see it. I said, no. I said, no. The Bible says for Moses that his eyes at 80 did not grow weak. I said, no, no, no. My eyesight must be restored. The reason why is that whatever you don't challenge will remain. So you will notice your dad died of cancer, then your mom had cancer, then your sister has cancer, and it keeps coming, but you forget that you have dominion. You notice, first quarter went, you didn't make money. Second quarter, you didn't make money. But you have dominion. And someone says, if I have dominion all about all these things, those are the things Satan is using to tell you don't have dominion, and the more you pay attention to it, you will lose your dominion. One thing I've taught you to say is this. Say with me. Say the biggest deal in this country comes to me. Say the biggest deal in my field comes to me. Wow. Why do you say that? Because you have dominion. People that have dominion understand that life and death are in the power of the tongue. You begin to call it in. You begin to, hallelujah. You begin to call it, you are pulling it in. You are pulling it in. I have dominion. Life does not happen to me. I happen to life. Someone says, ah, you don't know what can happen. Who can die anytime? I'm not amongst them. You need, to, you need to upgrade your mind to dominion thinking. To dominion thinking. 
The reason why, let's keep reading. Let's read the next verse. Oh, this is so good. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Because it's one thing to know you have authority, but you need to have the authority mindset. Yes. Nothing can just happen to me like that. I don't expect evil. I don't permit evil. I'm a child of God. If something has happened to you that should have not happened, be like, wow, I'm learning. I'm learning what I should do now. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at what verse 27 says. This very, uh, verse, um, verse 27. The Bible says, and God created the man and created man in his own image. And the image of God created him male and female. Verse 28. And God blessed them and God said, said unto them, be fruitful and multiply replenish the earth and do what subdue it means what resist because the tendency is for something to happen that shouldn't happen he says subdue it so you wake up in your body and you see a tumor subdue it you wake up and say lump in your breast subdue it you get a kind of report you don't want to get subdue it let me tell you something the thing is this let me uh, let me look up here most people never take this kind of teaching seriously until something is really wrong. The danger with that is that it's too late to prepare for battle in the day of battle. That's why in praying for the sick, you will ask them, why did you come when it was so critical? Because now the thing has really entered. Even in medical science, when sickness really enters, it's difficult to get out. So now that you are here, you need to train yourself especially many of you maybe your parents died from asthma they died from cancer and from time to time the devil will be flashing to your mind I, I know someone that told me said that my grandmother died of cancer breast cancer my mother died of breast cancer they even caused her breast he said i'm feeling some pain in my breast that without thought alone is satanic attack because that's how it's going to enter there's a certain back pain or blood problem your mother had your father it, it is certainly but you have dominion What is you? What is the use of you being in Christ if you cannot exercise your dominion? You must develop a dominion mentality. You must develop a dominion. So you must begin to say things like things like this don't happen to me. Because we are different. My case is different. My name is different. Someone say my case is different. We have dominion. Oh, someone say hallelujah. L let me show you some things about dominion. Just how some people exercise. Look at Exodus chapter 7, verse 1. This one, it, it's just a very powerful scripture by itself. Just you don't need explanation. Exodus 7, verse 1. Just you have dominion. With your dominion, you enter the realm of the spirit. And begin to pull things begin to pull things and people will begin to say ah, why is your own going so well we are all doing the same thing because before we went to the physical we have dealt with the spiritual first glory to God are you ready Exodus 7 verse 1 read, let's read one to go and the Lord said to Moses he said see I have no salika patora bakema rabatonda labadaya. See, see, it's not Moses saying it all. He said, God told Moses, I have made you a God to Pharaoh. Pharaoh was the most powerful king of his time. He said, He will start worshiping you. Whatever you say will be so in his life. He said, I have made you. See, I wish I wrote it. I didn't. What happened to Pharaoh? Pharaoh eventually fed Moses. He feared Moses. Even his servant feared Moses. He, Moses said that fire is coming down tomorrow. Even the Egyptians that don't believe in the God of Israel, they will bring their cattle from the field back home. He said, I've made you a God. You, the place you work, the place you work, some things should not happen. It's time to take in the family to take our... The problem is that we keep playing church. We don't play authority. We, we keep playing church. 
We don't know what we have. We don't know what we have. That's why we run from pillar to post looking for solutions. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Wow, this is so powerful already. Look at 2 Kings chapter 6. The Bible says, as we were falling in an axe, um, as we were falling in a tree, an axe head, the, the, the metal part of an axe fell off and fell into water. And someone says, Master, it was stolen. You know what Elisha said? Elisha said, Where was this? Where was it? Where, where, it was borrowed, rather. He said, Where was the axe head falling into water? Elisha took a stick, put it in water. The axe head floated out. Hey! Come on. Oh, no. the, these people were not idols. They are men and women like you. They had the same spirit that we had. Hey. The difference is that they understood the authority. In Act, in Act chapter 28, a viper, Bible call it a venomous beast, a poisonous snake, because the snakes are not poisonous, beat Paul. Oh, Shataya. When he beat Paul, Notice that Bible did not say Paul prayed. Paul just shook it in the fire. He didn't even pray. Why? The revelation was working in him. The Bible says they were expecting he would die. What was he standing upon? It says, if you shall drink any deadly thing, it shall not by any means hurt you. Are you here? It's understanding who you are in Christ. Understanding what our authority is. I remember some years ago there's this prophet that, my, that used to write prophecy for my mom so he had gone to this mountain somewhere on the outskirts of Lagos it's called Mount Tabora do you know Tabora? who knows Tabora? Uh -huh. someone knows it you know you don't lie don't, do you know Mount Tabora? if you know Tabora some of you have been there exactly you know Tabora yeah. you know Tabora yeah even when you drive you will sit there Mount Tabora it's, it's a big it's a, you know and this guy would, with big beard, big hair, more he, 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 oh, you know. He now wrote prophecy, wrote for my brother, wrote for my mom, then wrote to me and said, I will die. That I will die early. When they brought the prophecy, I didn't even bother to pray. See, let me tell you, there's a position you have where you don't even pay attention to Satan. Satan goes, did you say something? Mm. Did anybody say anything? I didn't even bother to pray. The reason why is that I was persuaded that I shall live and not die. The Bible says, the number of my days I will fulfill. Yes. Did you hear what I said? Nobody can kill me. My life, my life is in the hands of God. Yes. I'm the apple of his eyes. If you want to touch me, you have to touch him. Yes. Doctor Nancy, you don't have a baby. They made a mistake. They said your report says so. It's not your report. Whose report do you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. But it's about understanding your authority. Understanding your authority. Long and short, I'm alive. The person that gave the prophecy is dead. My mother that received the prophecy on our behalf is dead. I'm here, alive. Let me tell you something. Should I surprise you? Some persons, if they are giving that prophecy, to walk on them. You know why? Because, because they don't know who they are, they will have believed the prophecy. And because they believe the prophecy, it will happen. Someone says that you don't have head for husband. You'll be like, sir, wash your mouth again. He says, sir, say something else. You, you, you don't even want to give it back. How can that? You don't have husband head. Someone says, you don't have money head. Someone says, ah, no, no, you. Have you not heard those things before? They say, you, you chose husband, but you didn't choose money. You, you chose money, but you didn't choose husband. You say, you don't understand. In Christ Jesus, he has given me all that pertains to life and godliness. Oh, shaleka banamato sataya. Are you here, somebody? Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. He says, in Christ, he has blessed us with all that pertains to life and to godliness. We didn't have to make a choice. Everything we are blessed with. Good health, we are blessed with. Good marriage, we are blessed with. Good job, we are blessed with. Good children, we are blessed with. Fun we are blessed with joy we are blessed with good husband we are blessed with good wife we are blessed with good children we are blessed with we are blessed all around somebody say hallelujah we 
we don't have to choose he chose for us someone says as long as I'm in a country I can't do well what is that nonsense you don't understand my prosperity is not tied to location if I move to Canada I do well if I move to Dubai I do well if I stay in Lagos I do well because the force of prosperity and dominion is inside me he's not attached to a location he's not even attached to a political party he dies labor pdp apc anyone that wins i do well why i'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bear yeah, 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 yeah. that bears his fruit in season and whatsoever i do he prosper somebody say amen someone looks at you and says, we'll deal with you you say deal with me you said deal with me you said deal with me the bible says associate yourself together you shall be broken in pieces he said bind yourself together you shall be scattered in pieces i don't listen if you want to fail pick me as a target that's all you need to fail because greater uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world say i know who i am Say, I know what I have. Say, I have the name of Jesus. I have the choice of the Spirit. The power of God is in my spirit. Oh, shout glory! Praise God. We have authority. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 38. The Bible says they were eating the meal and there was poison in the meal. One of the, ma- one of the servants cried, there's death in the pot. Elisha said, bring it. He took the meal, put it on that pot. He said, eat it again. <laughs> Read it. The Bible says, and Elisha came to Gilgal, where there was a dress in the land. And the sons of the prophet before sitting before him said to him, set on the great pot and see the pottage of sons of the prophet. Go ahead, continue. I'm just jumping now. Verse 39. And one of them went to the field, gathered herbs and found a wild vine and gathered therefore wild gods, his lap full, and came and shredded them all into the pot of pottage, for they knew not. Verse 40. Verse 40 says this. And so they poured out the men to eat and it came to pass as they were eating of the pottage. They cried out and said, oh man of God, there is death. There's poison in the pot. What did they say? He said, and they could not eat it. He said, he said, bring me the meal. You go to your friends and they say the house of is possessed. Don't say, let's go to pastor. You say, bring the girl. You say, bring the girl. Why are we going to pastor? What are we here for? He said, this sign shall follow those that believe. In my name, they shall cast. He said, say, pastor, they shall cast out demons. I, I heard a beautiful story. Oh, glory to God. They brought the child, they brought a woman that was possessed to see a pastor, but they brought him to the house. He said, as we were waiting, the child of the pastor was in the sitting room. And so, watching television. So when the mother went sat down there, waiting for the pastor to come out, but the child was watching television. And the child of just looked at the woman, and the woman began to manifest. The child was just seven years old. He said, yo, evil spirit, come out! He said, by the time the father came out, the woman was already on the floor delivered. You, with your seniority in age, <laughs> ordinary APC red cloth, you cannot touch. He said, ah, APC, there's power there. Which other power than in the name of Jesus Christ? You know, when Christians say, some of you, you know, it, it's crazy. You, someone says you should go and consult something, consult a medium. There's something inside you that you should Google. You want to see something to know your future. You, you are Googling for psychic. There's something wrong. It's almost as if we don't know who you are. When you hear people that, see, I respect people that teach the word of God. But remember that revelation is in stages. So some pastors, because of the level of understanding, will say, don't eat in your dream. When you eat in your dream, wake up and go for deliverance. When I eat in my dream, I say thank you. The reason why is this. I'll tell you the reason why. Number one, all through the Bible, 
the only person that fits in the dream has been God. Think about it. Elijah, Elijah, Peter. The person that says it always been God. But the reason why they think it's the devil is because their mind is programmed that way. That they see the devil. But more than the fact that if it's in my name, he has told me in Psalm 23, he says, you prepare a table before me. So someone says, hey, but when I saw the food, I saw some wearing, wearing red and white. They were crying calabash. Didn't you read the verse? He said, you prepare the table for me in the presence of my enemy. See, he said, but the enemies could not disturb the table. Oh, he says, you prepare the table in the presence of my enemy. They, they were there to witness. Oh my God. Someone says, let my enemy die. What's the use? Your enemy needs to cry. When they see the glory shine in your life. They thought you would not get married. When they see the glory shine in your life, they thought your children will not go far. When they see your children rise, they'll be like, with all we did, you will now tell them there's no other name than the name of Jesus. You know, one time, I know all the things they say. I saw snail near my home office. They say, hey. So I see, they say, once you see snail, it means something. So I took the picture and posted it online. I saw Snail in my office. So all that, so all that dear me. Snail is a spiritual sign for slow progress. And you know the thing about life. One of the power, listen to me. One of the power God gave Adam was this. Whatever he called it, so it was. So, it's then, it's not, not reading the scripture. He said, Pastor, take it and pray hot fire prayer now. Pray. I just ignored it. You know what I did to the snails? I gathered them and said, Snail farm. Because what I saw, who would have sent me snail if not my father? So every time I go back and look at the snail farm, our day, because I was also selling them. Extra source of income. If you come to my house, we make nice sauce for you. Snail sauce. The reason why I'm saying is that if you keep looking for the work of Satan, you will find it. Glory to God. You are built for dominion. You, you're built. You, see, have dominion. Have dominion mentality. The Bible says we are seated with Christ. Far above principalities and power. Did you hear what it said? We are not near. We are far above. We are not mates. Far above. Glory to God. Why should I be afraid of evil? The reason why is that the, the, the amount of demonic fear that people live in, it's awful. And they don't realize that it's their fear that makes them more prone to the work of evil spirits. Glory to God. One time, Wills, Wills, uh, what do you call it? Wigglesworth was sleeping then he heard noise in his room, in an old English home with a rolling chair. He said, went to the sitting room and he saw like a demonic figure sitting on the chair, rolling the chair. I'm like, oh, Satan, it's you? Okay. And I went to sleep. So I said, how could he sleep? He said, even when he's there, what can he do? The devil can't do nothing. If you know him, warn him on me. If I catch him, it'll be terrible. Look at the kind of, the one I love is Kaman. You know, Kaman was a Christian rapper when I was younger. A Christian minister. He went and saw this evil spirit in the sitting room, you know, on, on his decks. Then he, he, he said, devil, it's you. Then he said, be gone. And the demon left. Then he saw that the demon had moved the chair, like from here to here. He said, demon, come back. He said, I don't know how you moved it initially. But the same way you moved it initially, moved my chair. He said, you will not give me work to do. Look at the look at the far above it's far above mentality. That's where I want when you can say Satan get lost. Uh, Jajo. Every time you're afraid of village people, you're afraid of this, you can't sit down here, you can't sit down here, you look on the right, look on the left. Why? Why so much fear of evil? 
He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He said, because, he says, he looked at evil, I will fear no evil. He said, because thou art with me. He said, thy rod and the staff, they comfort me. Praise God. If you have real demonic Christians, bring them to me. Bring them. He said, all pastors have cast down. It, 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 it does not reach me. What does that mean? You know, that people use that to oppress the pastor. I've taken him everywhere. They've they removed it, and so what? We don't need all the pastors to cast him out. It's just one. We don't even need pastor. Just, just children's church men by harvesters. <laughs> demon that will just say, <laughs> with sign code, <laughs> the demon will leave. Praise God. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. So the question is this. So you need to develop, you need to develop a far above mentality. That's what I'm going. You need to say, I'm seated far above. One time we were flying, it was a very troublesome flight, and I stepped off. When I woke up, the lady beside me said that, ah, sorry, can I ask you a question? He said, Didn't you feed all of it? I said, I did. He said, Why were you able to sleep? He said, I've, I've not been, if, I can't even eat on the flame. I said, oh, wow. I said, why won't I sleep when he that watches over Israel neither sleeps nor slumber? Why am I doing double work? My God does not sleep, oh. Glory to God. If not careful, every month you go to a hospital from one loss to the other, loss to the other, loss to the other. Why? Stop it! You open your wardrobe, so many recommended medication. This one for your knee ankle. This one for your toe ankle. This one for your blood pressure. This one, every day you, you're eating drugs like chalk. You're too young for that. Use your authority in the name of Jesus. I'm saying it right now because you may not be in the place where you need to know it, but the day of battle, you've been built for it. So why doesn't authority work? Because authority works because of light. Light means revelation knowledge. Oh, wow. Authority works before. Let me show you two scriptures and we'll close. Authority works. Look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 16. Authority works with light. What makes authority works is light, illumination. Genesis 1 verse 16. Can you go there quickly? Genesis 1 verse 16. The Bible says that, and God made two great lights. He says, the greater light to rule the day. And see, what determines what rule is the greatness of the light. The way you know your authority is working is the greatness of the light inside. So, it's not as if you don't have authority, but you don't have light. You don't know what you should know. He said, the greater night to rule the day and the lesser night. So some people, when this, listen to me, let me even use to explain. Someone said, I ate in my dream, I went for deliverance. That person could be right because he's walking with lesser light. He's still light, but it's what? Lesser light. Have you read what Paul said about eating food offered to idols? idols? In one place, he says, don't eat it. Then in another place, he said, what are idols anyway? They are nothing. Chop. Question said, which one do we follow? It was talking to the category of people. For people that have lesser light, that the food will disturb, leave it alone. But for those that are in the class of the senior, take the food. Sando, Kappa, Lebadea. There's always lesser light and greater light. At one, you know, when you watch African Magic, ah, Daniel, you have done bad job to us. African Magic, this is how they, they, they paint. That one man wearing white will not fire arrow and say, give me a name, give me a name, give me a name. Tuno! 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 For Tunde not to respond, guess what will happen? Today, someone will just wake Tunde up, someone will wake him up. Tunde will just carry Bible. Ah, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. So you see this arrow coming like this, and you see, as he's talking, you just go, bah! They will just clash and backfire. And in your mind, you think, I need to always be praying. This is why some people say, midnight prayers is very hot. My, yeah, tired. Let me just tell you, 
in my sleep I'm powerful <laughs> you know why it's my body that sleeps my spirit does not sleep even when I'm sleeping there's power radiating all over me are you here somebody I don't need to be awake to deal with foul spirits of darkness praise God when, when I was young you know one of the areas I grew up in they used to put sacrifice on the road when I come I, I accept it for them <laughs> I've made you go to Pharaoh <laughs> my, my dog fed on sacrifices I said let's go and eat I, I take I remove I say whatever you've said that I've cancelled it dog eat nonsense understanding your authority in Christ see the way you know authority is the light you have and that's why that's why if you're a Christian but you don't have light of the word I feel bad for you I feel bad for you because you keep playing church you, you keep talking you don't have light you don't know how to command things in the in the IT industry and they respond what makes it work is light Look at John chapter 1 verse 2. Oh, glory to God. Somebody say light. Light determines your dominion. Light determines the extent of your authority. Light determines your, your transformation. Light is powerful, sir. Verse 3. Oh, glory to God. The Bible says in verse 3, And all things were made by him, and without it was not made that was made. Verse 4. Verse 4. In him was life, and the light of all men verse 5 look at it and the light shalabaya. the light shines in darkness listen he didn't say darkness is resisting darkness cannot wrap his head around it darkness is overwhelmed he says darkness cannot comprehend darkness cannot comprehend the light what is light? What you light is not what the pastor told you, it's what you saw from the word. Light is not what you heard them say, it's what you caught from the word. Light is what you found in the word. You sit down with it until the word becomes lemma. The word begins to boil in your spirit. It begins to boil in your spirit. One of my uncles said to me, Ah, he said, Ah, when I was this was about six, eight years ago, he loved me. He said, hey, be careful though. You have early success. You I, I see it becoming a shooting star. I said, what does that mean, uncle? You do well early, then you do bad later. And I said, remember this in our family. They also succeeded early and it went bad. When he said so, I felt the arrow had entered. And when you feel spiritual arrow, it can be an advice. But the arrow entered me. You don't say, I rebuke it. What is this in the spirit? <laughs> This has no spiritual relevance. What does this mean spiritually? Has no spiritual relevance. It's spiritual babies that do things like this. In the realm of the spirit, authority is by words, not by finger. When, when, when I went, I, I began to feel that thing that ah, maybe I will feel later on in life. I went to Proverbs chapter 4. I found a scripture. How do you find it? So you look for it. It says the path of the righteous. It's like a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter. To the perfect day, I found it, brother. I found it, I found it, I found it, I found it. When the thought comes up, I say, Satan, it's too late. I have light. What is the light? The path of the righteous. It shines brighter and brighter to the perfect day. Glory to God. When we started church, my mom was so upset. He said, you'll be begging people to leave. I said, that will not be my portion. I found in the word, in the book of Luke, Jesus sent his apostles out, two by two. When they returned, he asked them, did you lack anything? And they said, nothing. Ah, and I found it. As he sent them, so he sent me. So I would also come back and say, do you lack nothing? And so, no. But I was not just taught. I found it. What have you found about your marriage? What have you found about your health? 
what have you found about your ministry uh you know somewhere in the bible uh businessman you better calm down businessman you better calm down this is not a matter of uh, what they call it to uh we're giving you some uh no people don't know what to say uh, uh need to find it the reason why people don't find it is that that devotion to bible study that's what the problem is that devotion to bible see you need to you are praying for finances can you think 10 scriptures you stand on and you say you have financial hardship problems you are praying for marriage can you give me 15 scriptures on marriage you are standing on there's none yet you are using makeup you will use makeup until it makes you down if you are not careful if you are not careful with the scripture you when you add scripture because the real scripture is the makeup praise god as a businessman you have scriptures you fire in the spirit when you wake up your wife says honey this month is good though you say it's always good every month because i have the key he said the light shines in darkness that means everybody in business things are bad things are bad but the light shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it it's a prayer you need to pray lord discipline to become to be devoted to finding lights hiya give it to me stand up let us pray